Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Python for Absolute Beginner series. In this video, we're going to cover a fundamental part of Python, variables. Variables, in my opinion, are probably the most fundamental aspect of Python and just programming in general. So what is a variable? A variable is basically an alias to some piece of data. They allow us to easily store and access data. If you're familiar with algebra, you know that you can have letters that equal numbers, like x equals 5 for instance, and we would call x a variable. And programming is super super similar, so we can assign any letter, like x, or even a word, like sandwich, to some piece of data. What kind of data can we store in variables? Let's quickly go over that. So Python has quite a few different types of variables, but we're going to focus on four in particular that I believe are the most basic and essential variables to start off with, and we'll get into more later. We have numbers, which are just numeric values, strings, and booleans. We break numbers into two categories, ints and floats. So let's start with int. Int represents any whole number. Examples of an int would be 1, 5, or 12. Literally any whole number you could think of. This is arguably the most common variable you're going to see. Floats represent any number that have a decimal value. Examples of a float would be 5.7, 1.8, and 9.0. If there's a decimal value in the number at all, it's a float. Even if it ends in a point zero like 5.0 or 8.0, it is still a float because it contains a decimal. A string is any combination of letters. Examples of strings would be the letter A, a whole sentence like hello my name is Austin, or hello world, or even just random letter gibberish like this. In Python and in most other languages, we always surround strings with either double quotations or single quotations. That's why, if you remember in the last episode, when we type print, we use quotations to type hello world because hello world is a string. The last type of basic variable that's super common is called a boolean. And if you're new to programming, you've probably never heard this term before. A boolean literally just means true or false. Booleans are super simple, but yet they play a huge part of Python and computer science in general. We'll talk a little bit about them in today's episode, but we'll dive deeper into booleans in the next episode when we cover something called conditional statements. So now that you have a basic understanding of the main variable types, how do we actually use them? Let's jump over to Google Colab that we set up last episode, and you can either continue writing in the same notebook that we made last time, or just create a brand new one. So to assign a variable to an int, we write this, x equals 5. Now it seems super simple, but let me quickly just break this down so we're on the same page here. X is the name of our variable, and you can name it literally whatever you want. There are some naming conventions you'll have to follow to prevent errors, but the name of the variable can be pretty much anything you want it to be. The 5 is what we want our variable to equal, and this is basically the data we're storing. And this is where we're going to fill in either an integer, float, string, boolean, or so forth. In this case, we're using a 5, which is obviously an int. And lastly, this equal sign is something called the assignment operator. And it basically lets the computer know that you're assigning a variable. Technically, it reads from right to left, saying 5 is being assigned to the variable x. In other words, x is now storing the value 5. I'm going to quickly write a comment off to the side here. And comments are basically lines of code that are used just for the user to kind of document what they're doing and just write personal notes to themselves so the computer actually completely ignores them. And if you want to write comments in your code, just type this little hashtag or pound symbol. So I'm just going to write just what I said here. X is variable name. Five is data we are storing. I want to make a quick note here that the order of assignment here absolutely matters. So X equals five is not the same thing as writing five equals X. The variable name that you're creating should always be on the left-hand side like this and the data you're putting in it should always be on the right-hand side. So if I have five equals X and I try to run that, I'm actually gonna get an error here. And this error says can't assign to literal because we're trying to assign a value to a variable, which doesn't make sense in this order. So long story short, just keep the variable name on the left-hand side and keep the data you're storing in it on the right-hand side. So if we just delete this and run it again, error is gone, no problem. So now let's try and print out our variable. And we're going to be using the print statement that we showed you in the last episode. So make a new line here. We're just going to type print parentheses and then put our variable name inside of those parentheses. 
And notice how this time we're not actually using any quotations around the variable like we did when we were typing hello world. And the reason for that is because quotation marks interpret very literally. So if I typed print quotations X and I press run, it's literally going to print the character X. But if I remove the quotations and I run just print parentheses X and run it, it's gonna print out five. Before we move on, I just wanna make a super quick note here so we're on the same page. These lines are going to run in order. So this first line here, x equals five, is gonna run first, and then right after, it's gonna run print x. And this is how Python works in general, so you gotta keep this in mind that these uh, lines run always from top to bottom. Okay, so now let's move on to the other variable types. I mentioned earlier that another type of data is called floats, which are basically just decimal values. Assignment is going to look identical to what we just did, except for floats will obviously have a decimal value instead of a whole integer. So let's actually create a new code block here. And we're gonna do just that. So let's make a new variable, y. And instead of setting it equal to an int, we're gonna set it equal to a float. So let's say 6.3. And if we wanna print this variable out, we're gonna write the same print statement like we did up above. So we're gonna write print, parentheses, and then inside of that, put whatever the name of your variable is. And if we run this, you'll see it'll print out 6.3. And I should really mention now that there's a really neat thing in Python where if you want to check what the type of your variable is, because maybe you're not sure, you just want to see what the output is, um, there's actually a really easy function for that. So if I do underneath this line, I write type y, and I run that, the output should say float because y is of type float because it is 6.3, which is a decimal value. So if I run this, yep, you'll see 6.3 and then float. And I'm gonna go ahead and add that type up here just to this one so you can see that X should output int. So we do type X and the output should be int. Perfect. So that's definitely a useful tool if you wanna debug or just have that in general so you can check a type, maybe if you're not sure what it is. All right, so let's go ahead and assign a string here. So I'm gonna open up a new code chunk. I'm gonna just click on this block and plus, plus code at the top so I can insert a new block below this one. And remember for strings, I said that we always use quotation marks when we're assigning a variable. So let's say we wanna have a string called hello world. Let's do Z equals quotation marks, hello world. And if we do the same thing we've done with all the other variables, we go down, print Z, we press run, hello world is displayed. And again, just like the other ones, if you wanna check the type of the variable and see what type of variable it is, you can always just do type, parentheses, and then your variable name, and that'll say str, which is just short for string. So let's make another code block here, and we're gonna cover Booleans. So remember that I said that Booleans are either true or false. And we have pretty much two ways of actually assigning Booleans. The first way is to literally assign it to the value true or false, like this. So let's make a new variable, my variable equals, oops, spell that correctly, my variable equals true. Now we can do that, or if we wanna have something that equals false, we can also do something like my other variable equals false. And just a quick note, remember I said that variable names can be pretty much anything, um, so I'm just kinda of making these names up as I go. I was using single letters up here just to save some time, but variable names can be whatever we want. So this first way here definitely comes in handy, and this is one way you can uh, assign Booleans. But the other way is to use something called logic operators. And logic operators are basically something that will evaluate to either true or false. And we'll definitely get a lot more into these into the next episode, but for now, just imagine that we have less than signs and greater than signs. If you think about it, any expression containing a greater than or less than sign is either gonna out evaluate to true or false. If I ask you, is five less than 10, you're either gonna reply, yes it is, or no it isn't. Meaning that it's either gonna evaluate to true or it's gonna evaluate to false, right? So I can actually assign a Boolean like this. I can say my variable equals five less than 10. 5 less than 10 is either going to be true or it's going to be false. In this case, 5 is less than 10, so 5 is true. So this is going to basically say the same thing as writing this. My variable equals true because 5 less than 10 evaluates to true. If I wanted to do false, same deal. 
we would do my other variable equals five greater than 10. Now, obviously five is not greater than 10. So this is gonna evaluate to false, which is the equivalent of writing something like this. So in summary, Booleans are always gonna be true or false, whether you actually write them as literally true or false, or if you write them as an expression that is evaluated as either true or false. So if we make two more lines down here, just to print out these variables, we'll do print my variable, go one line down, print my other variable. And like I said, this should evaluate to true and this should evaluate to false. So the result should be print true and then print false. And if we run it, yep, you'll see true and then false. So now you may be wondering, is it possible to change and update variables? And yes, it absolutely is. So let me go ahead and delete these code chunks here. So if we want to delete code chunks, we'll just go to this trash can button, delete cell. We're going to delete this search so we can free up some space here and go back up to the top. And we'll just make a brand new one up here. So it is possible to update and change variables. So let's say we have a variable x equals eight. And say for whatever reason, we want to change it eventually to x equals six. So we can just do x equals six right below it. Now let me print these out just so I can show you how this works. If I make a line under this one and I say print x, and I make a line under this one that says print x, what do you think the result is going to be? Now remember I said that these run in order. So first I'm assigning x to eight, and then I'm printing x, so it should print out eight. And then I assign x to six and then print x again. So x should print out six. So the result we should see is eight and then six. And if we run it, boom, you'll see eight and six. One of the unique things about Python is that we can actually change the same variable to a different type. So instead of x equals six, let's write x equals hello world and then print it out. And you'll see that we have eight and then hello world. So this is kind of a unique thing in Python and it's perfectly acceptable, though I probably wouldn't recommend constantly switching around the type of a variable just because it doesn't usually make a lot of sense to do so. So let's delete this chunk here and I'm gonna write three new lines. Let's say we have X equals 10, we have X equals 20, and then X equals 30. And then let's say at the very end of this chunk, we want to print out X. So with this code here, what do you think the end result is gonna be? Remember, I said that everything in Python runs in order from top to bottom. So if I have this print X down here at the bottom, it should be equal to 30 because X equals 30 is the most recent line of code and therefore is the most recent update for X. So if we run this, we should see 30. One of the really interesting things about variables is that you can actually assign a variable to another variable. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the clear output button and then just delete this to free up some space for us. So let's say we have a new scenario. Let's say we have X equals 12 and we say, hey, we wanna make a new variable Y that also equals 12. Now we could just write y equals 12, obviously, but instead x already equals 12, so we could write y equals x. And in this case, now y and x are both pointing to the value 12. Now note and remember that the order of this always matters. So the variable on the left-hand side is the new variable we're creating or updating. So saying y equals x makes sense, but writing x equals y would not make sense. So we're creating a new variable y, so we put on the left-hand side, equals x is the value we want to store. So now if we go down, we print out x, and then we print out y, they should both be equal to 12. Next, let's go over some basic math operations that we can use in Python. Just like basic math, we have four main math operations in the Python language. There's actually also a fifth one that we'll talk about too, and I'll go over that a little bit later. So the basic operations are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And hopefully those all sound pretty familiar to you. The fifth one is called modulus and I'll go over that one last. So let's open up a new code chunk here. Let's open up a print statement. So let's say we just wanna do some basic uh, arithmetic, some basic math here. 
And we want to start with addition first. So addition, we're going to use with the plus symbol. Let's say we want to do five plus five. We're going to print that out. The result is 10. Pretty self-explanatory. Let's say we want to have more than just two numbers. We can do five plus five plus seven plus nine. Press play, we get 26. So Python computes this very quickly and it's very easy to do math. Let's say you want to do subtraction, right? We'll do eight minus five, run that three, awesome. So we know subtraction is pretty easy. We can also add more than two numbers if we want like this. That outputs one. Let's say you want to do some multiplication and division. So multiplication, we would use this asterisk symbol, which is on the eight key on your keyboard, or some people just call it star. And this is how we do multiplication in Python. So let's say we want to do four times four, run that 16. Same thing as before, we can do more than two numbers, four times four times four, we're going to get 64. Now, lastly, let's say we want to do some division. Division in Python uses the forward slash operator. So let's say we want to do 10 divided by two, we would do 10 forward slash two. We go run and we get 5.0. The great thing about math in Python is that it's pretty easy and self-explanatory because we're using the exact same math operations that we learned as kids in school. The fifth operator is called modulus, and you probably haven't heard of this term before. And modulus is represented by the percentage symbol. So let me just write this off to the side. Modulus is percentage symbol. So let me quickly explain what modulus is. So modulus is very similar to division except it gives you the remainder between two numbers. So if you recall when you first learned division, you probably learned about finding remainders. For example, if we wanted to write 10 divided by four, and we output this, 10 divided by four doesn't divide evenly. As you can see, if we run it, the result is 2.5. But let's say we wanted to divide using only whole numbers. We could say that 10 divided by four is equal to two, with a remainder of two. What about 10 divided by three? 10 divided by three doesn't divide evenly either. If we run it, we're gonna get 3.3333 repeating forever, right? Or instead, if we're using only whole numbers, we could say 10 divided by three is equal to three with a remainder of one. And the modulus operator just returns that last remainder number. So when I write 10 modulus four, the remainder should be two. So let's write two here. Boom. If I wanted to do 10 modulus three, remember I said the remainder should be one. So we should print out one here. And if say we're trying to do a modulus operation on numbers that actually divide evenly, like 10 modulus two, obviously there's no remainder in there since they divide evenly. So the modulus result is zero. So the reason I actually wanted to go over arithmetic and basic operations in Python is because they come in handy when you're assigning or updating variables and you can freely do operations between variables as long as they're of the same type, relatively speaking. So let's say we have a new code chunk here. Let's say we have x equals five. Now we want a new variable y that equals five times the amount of whatever x is. So we can make a new variable y that equals x times five. And if we go and print both these out, we should get x is equal to 5 and then y is equal to 25. So let's run that and you can see we get 5 and 25. And let's even say we want a new variable. Let's go ahead and delete these print lines here. Let's do a new variable z that is equal to x plus y. And then now we just want to print out z. We already know that x is five, y is 25. So now we're doing z equals five plus 25. Printing that out and we get 30. So I think now you should have a pretty solid grasp of variables in Python. We've covered what the different variable types are like ints, floats, strings, and booleans. We also covered how to assign variables, how to print them, and how to do different operations between variables, including math operations. But before we close this video out, I want to quickly cover one more thing, and that's variable naming conventions. So let me go ahead and delete all of these blocks here. Let's go back up to the top, and we'll make a new one. 
I mentioned earlier that you can name a variable pretty much anything that you want, but there are a few rules that you need to follow. So a variable can only contain numbers, letters, or the underscore character. But the caveat is that they cannot start with a number or else the computer gets confused and will throw an error. Another rule is that it cannot have any spaces in it. So let me just write out a couple of examples of variable names that work and are perfectly legal and some that don't work and are illegal. So let's say we have legal variable names right here. Let's write out a few legal ones. And then let's write out a few illegal ones. All right, so as you can tell, all of these four here do abide by the rules. They only contain numbers, letters, or the underscore character. None of them start with a number and none of them have any spaces in it. Now let's go through some of the problems with these variables down here and why they're illegal. This is illegal because it starts with a number and we can't do that. This variable has a space in it and then this variable has a hyphen. And the only special character that's allowed is an underscore. Hyphens are not allowed. So to sum it up, basically just don't start a variable with a number, don't have any spaces, and don't contain any special characters that aren't an underscore. And besides that, feel free to name variables whatever you want. Now typically when naming variables that are multiple words long, we use something called camel case or snake case. These are both naming conventions that make variable names more readable. So camel case, let's write camel case here. Camel case is when we capitalize the first letter of each word except for the very first word. So an example of camel case would be my var written like this. Let's say my variable name like that. So we can see that we're capitalizing the first letter of each word except for the first one. And snake case, let's write snake case, is something similar, except instead of separating it by capitalization, we separate it by underscore. So the equivalent of these two in snake case would be my underscore var or my underscore variable underscore name. Now, I personally prefer camel case, and you'll probably see me using camel case throughout these tutorials but it really just comes down to personal preference. So this video is getting to the point where it's fairly long now, but we've touched base with the fundamentals of variables in Python now. You should now know what variable types are, how we assign variables, how we name variables, and how we can do math operations between different variables. Now there is a disclaimer that this video is probably going to be the longest in the series. So if you're able to get through this video, congrats, the rest will be quite a bit shorter. In the next episode, we're going to cover something called conditional statements. So take care, everyone, and I'll see you then.